Now, space missions used to be this big deal, but now they're starting to feel like a walk in the park. But there's a catch. Our bodies aren't exactly built for surviving on other planets. Now, I know what you're thinking. Our bodies will eventually adapt and evolve, right? Well, yeah, evolution is always on the clock. But let's be real here, it's not going to happen overnight. We're not talking about a cool million years for some changes to kick in. And honestly, who's got the time for that? So, how about tweaking our genes just a little bit to make living on other planets easier? Genetic modifications are all about changing an organism's genetic material, like its DNA, to give it some cool new traits or characteristics. Now, picture this. Scientists could totally mess around with our genes to make us more resistant to crazy temperatures. You know, like the temperature fluctuations of the moon, minus 298 degrees Fahrenheit at night to 224 degrees Fahrenheit daytime. Wow. They might even figure out a way to make us super tough against radiation, which is a huge deal in space or on planets with weak atmospheres. We definitely don't want to get fried out there. Oh, and here's another thing they could do. Tackle the effects of low gravity. Spending too much time in low gravity can really mess up our muscles, bones, and even our heart. But if they tweak those genes related to muscle and bone growth, we could become super strong and resistant to all those nasty effects. However, it's not as simple as it might seem. The technology for safe and precise genetic modifications is still in its early stages, so it might even take as much time as it would for our bodies to naturally evolve and adapt to other planets. There are a couple of nice exoplanets where humanity might potentially live. I'm talking about Gliese 667cc, Kepler 442b, Kepler 62e, Kepler 452b, Gliese 837, you name it. In fact, I'm sure you can do a better job of naming than these. Now, consider Gliese 667cc. Um, in fact, let's nickname this one Gary for short. Turns out that Gary gets about 90% of the light that Earth does. But instead of regular visible light, this planet mostly gets infrared light. To put it simpler, Gary is rocking only 20% of the visible light that Earth gets. Yep, it's a bit darker over there. So, do we need really warm clothes and night vision goggles to thrive on this planet? Nah, not really. In addition to darkness, Gary is estimated to have a higher mass than Earth, meaning it likely has a stronger gravitational pull. To adapt, humans would need to hit the gym at least twice a day. Translation? Humans would need to develop stronger muscles and bones to withstand the increased gravity. Over generations, natural selection might favor individuals with these adaptations. We still know too little about these exoplanets to move there anytime soon. Hey, how about some planets in our solar system? Let's discover our top picks. This way, we can easily figure out what changes we need to make. So, first things first, let's eliminate the two ice giants in our solar system and their friends. Yep, Neptune, Uranus, and the two gas giants Saturn and Jupiter. Sorry guys, but terraforming you is just not gonna happen. Even so, we still have four super cool candidates right here in our solar system. You all know them well. Venus and Mars, the popular kids on the block. And then we have Jupiter's moon, Callisto, and Saturn's moon, Titan. They might not be as famous, but they've got some serious potential to become Earth 2.0. So, it turns out some of Jupiter's moons are super cool for terraforming. They're packed with water, which is a big plus. But here's the catch. Only Callisto is far enough from Jupiter's radiation belt. You see, on Earth, we get hit with about 0.24 rems of radiation per year. But, for instance, Ganymede, another of Jupiter's moons, gives away a whopping 8 rems per day. Just to make it clear, professional workers here on Earth can have more than 5 rem per year. Callisto is different, though. We don't need to tweak our genes, as it only gets about 0.01 rems per day, which we humans can totally handle. Now, let's not get too carried away with the idea that life on Callisto is all sunshine and beaches, like in California. Nope, it's more like an icy wonderland out there. So if you ever find yourself on Callisto, make sure to pack your snazziest protective clothing and some high-tech heating systems. Honestly, at this point, 
we might as well wish for evolution to take us back to our furry animal days. I mean, think about it. Our ancestors were rocking some serious fur game, just like those cool chimps and gorillas. But as time went on and we got all fancy with our evolution, we decided to ditch the fur coat and go for a more minimalist look. Now, why did we lose our fur? That's a question that has puzzled scientists for ages. Darwin thought it was about finding less hairy mates, while others believed it was to keep those pesky lice away. But these days, most researchers think it all comes down to staying cool. Picture this. Our ancestors were strutting their stuff on open dry lands after they learned to walk on two legs. Think of a patchy forest or a sunny savanna instead of a lush rainforest. In that kind of environment, overheating was a real threat. So we evolved to have less body hair and more sweat glands to help us cool down by sweating like crazy. Now Titan, the moon of Saturn, is like a treasure chest of resources just waiting to be cracked open. We're talking hydrocarbon reserves that make Earths look like a kid's play, with petroleum for days. Plus, it's got all sorts of organic compounds like methane, ammonia, and water. And don't forget its atmosphere is a nitrogen party, just like early Earths. Here's where it gets really interesting. If Titan's atmosphere is similar to what Earth used to be, we could totally transform it into a modern Earth-like atmosphere. Picture this, giant mirrors in space beaming sunlight onto Titan's surface, heating things up and releasing water vapor. Oxygenated atmosphere coming right up. And to top it off, Titan hangs out within Saturn's magnetosphere, so it's shielded from those pesky solar winds. Now Titan's gravity is about one-seventh that of Earth, which could lead to muscle and bone deterioration over time. To counteract that, our bodies would need to develop stronger muscles and denser bones to withstand the lower gravity. Seems like Earth is the only place where we can't skip gym without gravitational consequences. Now, when it comes to being the hottest planet, Mercury may be the Sun's next-door neighbor, but Venus takes the crown. The temperature there is a scorching 870 degrees Fahrenheit on average. It's like trying to survive in a pot of boiling water or in the fiery depths of Venus itself. I guess the richest people out there would be those selling sunscreens and ice cream. <laughs> Sorry folks, no amount of evolution can turn us into superhumans who can handle Venus's extreme conditions. The only beings that theoretically could possibly thrive there are tardigrades. These tiny cute little critters that look like caterpillars and have some seriously impressive toughness. They can survive boiling water, the darkest depths of the ocean, and even the freezing airless emptiness of space. In fact, they were part of a scientific study on a spacecraft that unfortunately crashed on the moon. Still, recent research proves that even these guys won't survive on Venus. Now, look at this guy. He's been kicking it on Mars for ages, which explains why he's rocking the wrong shade of self-tan. Turns out all those carrot-loving carotenoids in his diet, like sweet potatoes, bell peppers, tomatoes, and pumpkins, are the aces up his sleeve protecting him against UV rays. The more he munches on those, the more he turns into a walking orange. And let me tell you, his strength? It's all about that Martian gravity, my friend. The gravity there messes with our perception of weight. So if you want to be a boss on Mars, you gotta chow down big time. Like if you weigh 150 pounds on Earth, it feels like you're carrying no more than 55 pounds on Mars. So overindulging in food can totally help bridge that gap between gravity and weight. Ooh. Time to feast like a Martian!